The Ford Motor Company Philippines was once one of the leading automotive manufacturing companies in the entire archipelago country. It was one of the initial companies in helping the Philippines put up its industrial economy, simply because the entrance of Ford into the Philippines dates way back to 1913, when the country was under American rule. Therefore, with many opportunities seen by these tycoons, Ford and many American companies went on to establish the country as a base of manufacturing, as a base for overseas operations, and ultimately as a base for its long-term use. However, as time shows, Ford Motor Company Philippines, which was once a reigning company for the Philippine automotive industry, is now long gone. While the company is still markets and sells its products and services, what disappeared was its manufacturing processes in the Philippines. Starting in 1968 to 2012, Ford had maneuvered producing car after car, and even its last plant in Santa Rosa was regarded as a state-of-the-art facility with a whopping 4 billion pesos cost, or $270 million, a huge amount considering this was back in 1997. Yet by 2012, Ford Motor Company Philippines had announced the consolidation of manufacturing operations in Southeast Asia, affecting its state-of-the-art facility in Santa Rosa, which ceased operations. Immediately, hundreds of workers had been laid off, and immediately the Philippines saw yet again another American giant leaving the country, as it was only a few years back that Intel, another American manufacturing giant, had also left. Most people had then come to the question, what happened? Was it yet again due to the political instability that the Philippines bore, or was it because of the extraordinary costs that are unique to the country? Costs pertaining to electricity or even a high corporate taxation system? Well, let's find out by starting at the very beginning. Ford's history in the Philippines started way back in 1913. However, it was not only until 1929 that the official Philippines Ford Car Works Incorporated was established. The market likewise from the 1920s until 1970s was notably dominated by a majority of American brands. It was known that brands such as Dodge, Chevrolet, and Mercury, along with Ford and others, have dominated the Philippine automotive industry. Arguably for the reasons the country is connected to its American rulers. As one of the only few competitors in the country, the market would then be ripe for expansion. In 1967, Ford Philippines would then be established as a direct subsidiary of the Ford Motor Company. It took only one year after the establishment of the company in 1968 for the operations around its plant in the Metro Manila region to begin. The factory sat on over 182,000 square meters and had functionality as an assembly plant situated on an 11 hectare land area. Strategically as well, it was located in the Muntin Lupa industrial area, just 15 miles south of the capital city, Manila. This, of course, was also seen as a huge economic breakthrough. The viability of the Philippines being a chosen manufacturing destination was starting to begin, and its employees, which numbered 450, had started to receive a plentiful amount of benefits. Henry Ford II, who was the chairman of the Ford Motor Company at the time, even stated that the Ford Company was optimistic for the Philippines' economy, as manifested by their multi-million peso investment. It was also further emphasized that their plant in Greater Manila was confident in the continuing development of the country. Fast forward to 1976, the Ford Philippines had once again inaugurated a body stamping plant in Bataan, which may pose confidence to the growing Philippine economy. However, due to issues and challenges, the company in 1984 ceased operations and it was only in 1997 that they would come back to the country, establishing the corporate name of Ford Motor Company Philippines, and it was that very state-of-the-art plant located in Laguna that helped the return of Ford to the country. Through the next coming years of operations, the company continuously expanded its market share and sold a ton of Ford branded cars throughout the country, selling models such as Ford Lynx, Ford Ranger, Ford Escape, and so on. At its peak, the Laguna plant was sitting on 21.4 hectares of land area that had an annual capacity of over 36,000 units. What is even more is that the plant in Laguna owned by Ford Motor Philippines was the only car maker in the entire Philippine automotive landscape that was used for exports in other countries at that time. Therefore, Ford's Laguna plant was not only viable for the Philippine domestic economy, but it also proved that the country is also a grand investment destination for export purposes. Yet, as we noted earlier, the company would soon cease its operations started in 2012. It was reported exactly in June of 2022 that Ford had announced starting next year they will discontinue all manufacturing operations in its Laguna plant. 
The reasons, however, as the president of the company at the time cited, were due to supply and operational efficiencies. The lack of a supply base and economies of scale were the major issues that came up with this very difficult situation, as the Ford A. Sean president said. It was also stated that they tried their best to come up with a solution such as bringing different products to the Philippines that may click in the automotive market, but it wasn't enough. And unfortunately, its employee count in the Laguna plant, which counted 250, would also see an immediate backdrop to their jobs. While we don't know what happened to those remaining employees, we are however sure that the Laguna plant has affected not only their jobs, but the downstream effects, and also the indirect benefits that those 250 employees did. A truly huge, disappointing monument. As it was also reported that from 2002 to 2012, Ford Philippines had cumulative exports of over 80,000 units valued at over 1 billion US dollars, of which shipments made it to Thailand, Indonesia, and Malaysia. But since they left, the replacement was that these Ford-branded cars in the Philippines would only be acquired overseas, both from Thailand and the United States. One of the only things that were left behind by Ford was its sales and marketing. Their products and services continued in the country, and they expanded their dealerships around the Philippines. Finally, while their plant could have seen its operations cease, one might also remember that in 2015, the very same plant was acquired by Mitsubishi Motors Philippines Corporation, a Japanese automaker that had helped thrust this fledgling plant to good use. But anyway, the exit of Ford Motors Philippines manufacturing capabilities was simply due to those two factors. However, these two factors can easily be argued. After all, a company's downfall can suggest more than meets the eye. In fact, a Rappler article had even cited that Ford and the automotive industry had been advocating for an extension in tax perks to help keep production in the Philippines. This might have already suggested that they were struggling to continue production within the borders. And as noted by the same Rappler article, these very Ford officials themselves stated that it was also simply because there was a lack of government support compounded by the fact that local market was not growing as much as they expected it to. And a further look at Thailand, the neighboring country of the Philippines, and also known as the regional automotive manufacturing country, would likely be the better option for a more sustainable and long-term view. However, at the same time, one can also not remove the fact that the Philippines is highly dominated by Japanese automakers, which are further being intensified by the rise of both South Korean car brands such as Hyundai and Kia, along with new entrants from China. One of the only amazing facts that we can probably praise Ford in the Philippines is that it kept a rather fair amount of market share. In 2021, the entire brand had sold approximately 20,000 units, and even its small SUV lineup is stated to have a 55% market share. A quite surprising feat, considering how Ford has failed in a number of other Asian countries. And no, they did not fail related to keeping production alive, but rather actually gaining a hold in selling their own brands. Thus, it can easily be argued that it was duly more than those two reasons alone. But what do you think are the other reasons why Ford exited the Philippines? Let us know down below. Thank you for watching.